Number 38. What is the age of mummified primate skin that contains 8.25% of the original quantity of carbon-14? Okay, so we got some old primate skin here. Ooh, we got some mummified primate skin, and we want to know what's the age of it, right? So we want to know if someone asks you, you know, what's your age? You would say, I'm, you know, 21 years old or whatever. So in this case, we're looking for a blank year old answer. Or, I mean, could be months. Depends on what the information that carbon-14 has. Now, carbon-14 decays very, 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 very slowly. It has a half-life. That's what this T-half means. The T-half is a half-life. So the amount of time it takes to decay to 50% of your original sample, you got to go 5,730 years. Whew. So that's a really, I mean, generally a really long half-life. Now this mummy, there's only 8% left. This is the time it takes to contain 50%. So we've been through a couple of half-lives here. But now, if they're asking for the age, right? They're asking for, you know, what's the age of this primate skin? Generally, you know, 12 years old, 13 years old. That basically is just a fancy way for saying, you know, how much time has gone by, right? If you're 21 years old, you know, 21 years has passed. So essentially, we are looking for a time. We're looking for a time value. We want to know how much time has elapsed in which that carbon-14, the radioactive carbon, to decompose to 8.25% of the original. Now, if we're talking about um, carbon-14, carbon-14 is one of the more famous radioactive material. Generally, if you see carbon-14, it's always going to be radioactive. So we're dealing with the radioactive isotope. So radioactive decay, it's going to decay. But now, the thing is, is just know that any type of radioactive decay, doesn't matter what atom they give you, if it's just a uranium, a U, or a, a nitrogen, right, a plutonium, it doesn't matter. But all of these will undergo first order kinetics. Now, just because this is generally a different, you know, chapter in your chemistry course, they give you different formulas. But... If you're in a standard chemistry course where usually nuclear chemistry, this chapter is at the end, you've already learned your first order integrated rate laws, which are these two down here. Why would we have to use different formulas? I don't know, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna memorize only my two formulas and just know that if they throw me a question that has to do with radioactive decay, I'm using these because there's no exception to the rule. So, Let's use these formulas to solve for the time that has gone by. Now, if we're trying to find a general time, that's this T down here. It's not the half-life because we're way beyond the half-life. We have only have 8.25%. So I know that at the end of the day, I am looking for that T, right? This is the time that has elapsed. And that's what I don't know. So that's going to be my x value. But that means that I should know these three other variables. Let's talk about um, the a's and the a notch. Now, these are in brackets. That just means that there's a certain type of amount. Now, I love this formula because you could use any unit. You could use percents, sure. You could talk about in fractions, grams, moles, molarity, doesn't matter. Just got to make sure that your units are standard across the board. This A notch, this zero, means that no time has gone by, and so this would be the initial amount. So the initial amount. Which means that the other one has to be the final amount. Okay. So if it says that at the end of the day, we're only containing 8.25% of the original quantity. That's how much that's remaining. So I know that this number is going to be a 8.3, no, 8.25%.
So they didn't tell me the initial amount, but we're dealing in percents. So what's the full total percentage of anything? Yeah, I mean, it's always out of 100%. So we know that this is going to be 8.25. This is going to be 100. Now the question is, well, what's the K value? The K value is the rate constant. But if I read, they didn't tell me any information for the rate constant. So uh, I can't solve for this yet because I need the rate constant. But hold up. Here is a formula between the half-life and the rate constant. Now, since this uh, question came from a textbook, they're going to assume that you can grab your standard values. And the standard value was what I have written down here, that the half-life of carbon, and carbon only, is 5,730 years. Different isotopes have different half-lives. But since I'm allowed to use that, I know that this is 5,730 years, and let's solve for K. So 5730 equals the 0 0.693 divided by the K. You can cross multiply, you know, do a little swippity swappity roo, right? So this would be 5,730 times K equals 0 0.693. Let's solve for K by, ooh, let's connect that K, okay, cool, by dividing by the time, 5,730. Okay, so this goes bye-bye. And 0.693 divided by 5730. That looks good to me. All right, so we get a K value, a rate constant, of 1.209. That's good enough. Times 10 to the negative fourth. Since the half life was in years, this K value would be years to the minus one. Now we know that this rate constant is going to be the 1.209 times 10 to the negative fourth. So whatever we found out here, plugging it in there. And now we can solve for the time, the time that has elapsed. How much time, years, has elapsed to make you how many years old you are. So ln of, I almost lost my place there for a little bit. Sometimes, sometimes I say to myself, where am I? Too many problems causes, not too many chemistry problems, right? Doing too many problems, got to take a break sometimes. But we just got to keep going. ln of 8.25 equals negative that K value, which was 1.209 times 10 to the negative fourth times by the X value. That's the time. And then we have 100%. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simplify my LNs. So let's see what we get. LN of 8.25 is 2.1102 equals, if I simplify all of this, this would just be negative 1.209 times 10 to the negative fourth X and then ln of 100 plus 4.6052. Let's solve for x by subtracting 4.6052 on both sides. 4.6052, scoopity scoo. And now we have so I'm going to do the full answers here. So this minus this, we get a negative value, but that's okay. Negative 2.4949, 6 equals negative 1.209 times 10 to the negative fourth, and that's times by x. So if we want to solve for x, all we got to do is just divide by this negative value. 
So negative 1.209 times 10 to the negative fourth, negative 1.209 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that is going to tell us how many years have gone by. So this value divided by, wait a minute, where am I here? I need this value. Oh, yes, this is the k value. Okay, so I'm going to come... I'm going to say negative and then grab that k value all the way from up here. Whoa! <laughs> That's crazy! x equals 20,629, roughly, years, because this is how much time has elapsed. So, if 20... 1,629 years have elapsed, what's the age of this primate skin? Yeah, I mean, this is, maybe I'll just put it over here. We're just going to, you know, call it uh, 2 point, you know, 2.06 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4 years old. That's nuts. So that's the age of this mummified primate skin. So this primate was living 20,000 years ago. Wow, that's crazy. But anyway, cool stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much for <laughs> watching the video, sticking with me. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. I love talking to you guys. I read every comment, and I try to get back to as many as I can in my spare time. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming along for the ride. If you want to help us out, you can become a member to the channel. Um, by helping us a little bit out, you get more perks from us. So you could check the tiers, you know, if one suits your fancy, go for it. But thank you so much. You guys rock. Good, good luck on your tests and quizzes. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.